welcome. Using a series of real-world examples, I'm going to show you how to rapidly generate great-looking titles, graphic elements, and effects directly inside your Avid timeline using Titler Pro from New Blue FX. In these tutorials, we'll be focusing on using Titler Pro version 1 with Avid Media Composer version 6. Titler Pro allows you to rapidly create graphical content which you can layer, style, effect, animate, time, and transition, all from a very clean and intuitive interface. Titler Pro allows us to go beyond titling and enter the realm of motion graphics, where you can rapidly create a brand or look for your show. As an example of this, we'll now look at creating a main title and a matching transitional element for our new motorcycle web series, Moto Rides. As usual, we'll mark up an area in the space above the opening shot here on V2. And from the effect palette, we'll drop in the Titler Pro effect. Enter effects mode, and then enter the Titler Pro interface. Now we'll type in lowercase moto, M-O-T-O, followed by uppercase rides, R-I-D-E-S. This is going to be themed black and yellow, so using the Style tab, we can start out by setting the main face of the text to yellow. And now let's extrude that text to make it 3D. Now we'll add a 3D outline in black. And let's extrude that by the same amount. Adjust the layer depth. And now I'm going to add a third layer, another 3D face. At this point, Titler Pro has put the newly added face behind the main face we are working on. So let's pull it up in front by altering the layer depth. Now that we can see what we're doing, I want to change this face to a white alpha gradient. And then drop the entire face opacity way down to about 25%. And make any further depth adjustments. So by adding these elements together, I now have a metallic yellow with a bold black outline. And as I rotate around this element, you can see that I have indeed created a fully three-dimensional text object. One of the things I just love about Tyler Pro is that any word or letter within a paragraph can have its own size, font, color, position, orientation. Meaning that if I now wanted to change the size of just this portion of the paragraph, M-O-T-O, -O, the lowercase modo, we could take those letters and maybe scale them up slightly to more evenly match the size of the capital letters. Now I could even reposition perhaps create a slight offset between Moto and Rides. Now, before adding transition and filter effects, I'm going to add some keyframes for movement. First, I need to switch on keyframing, which as you can see, by default, places a keyframe at the beginning of my selection. To add further keyframes, I'm simply going to position the timeline cursor and then click the Add Keyframe button. So, I've added one keyframe just after the text will have transitioned in and another to mark where the text will begin to transition out, and one final keyframe at the end. If I now increase the Z position for the third keyframe, the text comes towards the camera. Now, I could also apply a slight amount of rotation here on this keyframe to give a subtle sense of the 3D nature of these letters. To fix these values for the remainder of the clip, you can just right-click, copy, and paste the values from keyframe 3 to keyframe 4. Next, some effects. I want to add some movement, something that feels like the rumble from the road. So from the Library tab, let's go into Effects, into the Starter Pack, into Film Camera. Some of these are a little bit much for what I'm looking for, but I think this one here, Hand Cranked, that looks pretty good. So um, let's double click and that should, uh, that should add a bit of camera shake like so. Next, I want to add a little glow to the yellow face. So from the library tab again, under starter pack, let's go to dream glow. There's a few different glows in here, but I'm going to go for poltergeist. Now, when I apply this, that's a bit extreme. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the glow effect here in the timeline. I'm then going to use the effect controls within the effect tab to turn down the glow and turn down the amount of blur and, until I get 
where I want to be. And, and I can switch the effect off and on by using this little eye icon here. So turn it off, turn it back on again. I can preview the work that I'm doing. So I really like the way this is shaping up. We have a hard, crisp black outer edge and the metallic yellow face has a degree of softness from the glow and the blur. So now let's combine this work with some transitions. From the library tab again, go to transitions, to animations, to overlap zoom. And there are some nice options in this category. But perhaps my favorite for this would be flashing letters. Now, here's a trick to quickly create the complementary transition out. Just go back to the effect, double click to add again. Now move the second version of the effect to the end like so. And because we have the transition selected in the timeline area, the transition sub tab is already open. And so here are the transition settings. And on the second one, we can choose reverse. So now when we play this back, we can see that we get an animation on and then an animation off. I like this, we're almost there, but I need it to feel a little bit more extreme. So I have an idea. Let's go back to the library tab, to effects, to the starter pack again. And let's choose the lens correction category. Here you've got a range of different effects, but I'm gonna choose big bulge. That's pretty cool much more in your face, so this is good. We've got a great looking main title. Now, how do we roll this into more of a branding session for our show? Well, I can start by saving the paragraph preset we just created. Remember, a preset contains the text style, the transitions, and any effects you've put together in a single paragraph. So let's save this as Moto rides dash main. There we go. Now let's create a new paragraph. And here in this new paragraph, I'm going to type three arrows or chevrons like so. Next, I'm going to go back to the library to retrieve the newly saved paragraph style Moto rides dash main and double click to apply it to the new paragraph of arrows. Make any size and repositioning adjustments we need to. I want this up at the, the top uh, portion of the frame here. And I'm going to remove the overlap zoom. That's just way too much. And of course, now having removed that, we notice that something awkward is going on. And that's because we can't have the arrows over top of the other elements, which seem to be falling in from the position of the camera. That just doesn't make 3D sense. So I need to drop the arrows layer down below the main layer there. There we go. Now let's switch on keyframes for the arrows and use the X position controls to begin the arrows off screen left. And then let's just have them animate in and move off screen right. like so. I should also trim it up so that it begins uh, towards the end of the main title transitioning in. There we go, that's, that's shaping up nicely. So, now I could create another separate paragraph and apply this new arrows paragraph as a template. But if that's all I really want to do is double something up, I can show you a faster way with Titler Pro. From the library tab, go to effects, go to the starter pack and go to reflections and double click simple reflection. Now it is a reflection effect. So we'll need to uh, just make a couple of adjustments here. So we're going to adjust the position slightly, and we're also going to adjust the fade and the opacity. There we go. That's great. So now let's save this new paragraph preset as Moto Rides dash 
arrows. So now we've completed a main title. So simply exit Titler Pro to have that applied to the sequence we're working on. Now let's take the work that we've done and lift the arrows element to create a custom transition. Here in the sequence, we have a cut point. I've marked up the area around that cut point on V2 and applied a blank Titler Pro effect. From the effect editor window, we'll launch back into the Titler Pro interface. So we'll type in our three arrows. There we go. We'll locate and apply the newly created paragraph preset, Moto Rides dash arrows. Now we don't need the reflection any longer. So let's just select that and hit delete. And I also want to make the arrows big enough to act as a kind of a wipe to get the text really big. First, set up your style. Next, adjust the font size, and we'll, we'll just take this all the way up here. Then you can go ahead and adjust the scale. And of course, you could also push things further with the Z position. I'll also need to reposition in X and Y here to make sure the arrows are centralized in the screen. And next, to finalize my wipe, I'll need to add some movement. So I'll turn on keyframing and animate the arrows on from the left at the beginning and out to the right. There we go. That's working nicely. So maybe to give uh, the sense of a little bit more speed here, we could add an additional effect. I'm going to go to library, to uh, effects, to starter pack, to sheer energy. And I think I'll use smear in this case. There we go. Now, one final element to finish this as a transitional template. I'm going to add a shape. I'm going to go to the Style tab to set the color. And I'm going to scale the shape up till it fills the screen, uh, like so. Now I'll drop it below the other layers. There we go, that's more interesting. And then from the library, back to Transitions, Animations, and Fade In. Um, I'll add that actually twice. I'll go back and repeat that. So we have one for the beginning and one for the end. And then we can simply adjust the length of these transitions until we have uh, one or two frames of fully obscured background like so. Exit Titler Pro. And now we have our main title and our transitional element ready to go. Uh, we can mark up the area around the titles, clip menu, and then just choose a quick render into out. And now we can do a real time playback of the sequence. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how to animate a logo and images with text and effects.